Armstrong and Tommy Morrissey, the officials. They men the regular season. Georgia Tech blew them out in Coral Gables, 87 to 60, but Wong missed the second half with a leg injury. And in the words of Coach Jim Larinaga, the Hurricanes were just awful. It's Miami ball to get it started. And Josh Pastor opens with his own defense, which Coach Larinaga expected. And Olaniye missed the three. Elijah Olaniye. Miami playing with just six scholarship players. Here's the Georgia Tech starting five. We talked about right in Alvarado with DeVoe, an excellent shooter. Usher and Khalid Moore. Here's DeVoe, who had a terrific game in the win against Miami in the regular season at 29 points. And it's Jordan Usher with the first basket of this one. Senior from Canton, Georgia, transfer from USC. And we'll refer a lot to the big three of Georgia Tech. Alvarado, DeVoe, and Moses Wright. Jordan Usher is the glue guy. Of course, every good team needs one, but he's the guy that does the tough stuff for the Rambling Wreck. Wong let a three fly. He's going to start the game off the ball. He's been primarily their point guard over the last six games since Harlan Beverly, their point guard, went out for the year with a back injury, one of many season-ending injuries for Miami. Cameron McGusty will be the point to start. Strong move to the bucket, and Moses Wright has his first. Nice finish by Moses Wright. Also patient offense by Georgia Tech. Michael DeVoe had the mismatch. He was unable to beat Brooks. But by getting it to Moses right, he was able to take his size advantage over Anthony Walker. Here's McGusty. Jim Larinaga said he'd be the primary point guard today. A little more experience. And he scores on the floater down the lane. And he thinks McGusty will do a better job of recognizing the changing zone defenses. Jim Larinaga said they play a 1-3-1 against them, 1-1-3. And he thinks McGusty will get them in the right offense more often than not. Well, the thing about Josh Pastner's zone defense, it morphs during the possession. It may start out in the 1-3-1, but it could change to anything as you see Michael DeVoe traveling in the paint. But previously, you see DeVoe is unable to beat Brooks. So Moses Wright, patient, taking his time against Anthony Walker. And if Miami allows that to happen, Moses Wright will have a field day when you look at what he's done over this last six game winning streak 23 and a half and shooting 67 percent from the field. He came on late to be the player of the year. You didn't his name hear his name a lot during the season as a player of the year candidate but magnificent during the six game winning streak which was their longest in ACC play since they won seven in a row to end the 95 96 season. DeVoe, the interception, and he was fouled as he tried to go coast to coast. Now, Sean, do you honestly think in that possession that Jim Laranega would prefer for Cameron Mcgusty to take that foul or just concede the two points? When you think about the fact that they have such a short rotation, you need him on the court. Yeah, I agree. I think he would have preferred they just allow the bucket. See the one three one to start out the possession, but it morphs and as you get under the three point line, it turns into a two three zone. Anthony Walker, he's been rock solid in their two wins against Miami and Clemson. Yesterday, the win over Clemson at 15.6 rebounds, three steals. Yeah, 16 points for him in the matchup versus Georgia Tech early in the year as well. As you mentioned, Isaiah Wong leaving that game with the leg injury. Traveling the call, Georgia Tech turns it over. Usher right and Alvarado two points apiece so far for the Yellow Jackets. 15 and 8. 11 and 6 in conference for Coach Josh Pastner. 11 wins in each of the last two years in conference play. They were 11 and 9 in the league last year. First time they've had back to back double digit win seasons in ACC play in more than 40 years in the conference. Nice floater by Mcgusty, the transfer from Oklahoma. Great recognition by Mcgusty running into Moses Wright, who averages close to two blocks per game and pulling up instead of trying to challenge the big fella at the basket. Wright, who played only 
One year of varsity high school basketball in Raleigh, North Carolina. Alvarado fed the corner, and the three would not go for Usher. Or for DeVoe, pardon me. Nasir Brooks, the transfer from Cincinnati. They're going to count the bucket and a chance for a three-point play. And Moses Wright will be called for the foul. Much to Georgia Tech, hard to believe, guys. He had just two offers out of high school. Division II, Cataba. I hope I'm saying that right. No, and you're here, not. No, no I'm not. not. I had a feeling it's I okay. wasn't. It's okay. But you'll correct me. <laughs> <laughs> and here at Georgia Tech. Yeah, Catawba College. Catawba, thank you. <laughs> Salisbury, North Carolina, used to be the home of the National Sports Writer and Sportscaster Hall of Fame. Three, Kyle Sturdivant off the bench, another transfer from the University of Southern California. He made a three to tie it. It really is a remarkable story. Josh Pastor said his staff saw athleticism and raw talent and took a chance on Moses Wright, and boy, were they rewarded taking that chance. Player of the year in the conference. Of course, getting an opportunity to work with Eric Reveno on a daily basis is going to help your development. There's nice bucket by Nasir Brooks working on Rodney Howard has also come in off the bench for Georgia Tech. He's a transfer from Georgia, has played off and on. He's usually their eighth man. A lot of nights they're just a seven-man rotation. Alvarado for three. And the rebound for Anthony Walker. Miami leads 11 to 9. First number 13 seed to make it to the ACC tournament quarterfinals. Magusti the bucket, and they're up by four. Nice play there by Cam Magusti as he reaches back to let Sturdivant know that he's just a bit too small, not going to be able to guard him, especially going to the basket with a full head of steam. Alvarado out of Christ the King High School in New York City. Had its spin out. But I will say, Jose Alvarado moving a lot better. Played with an injury down the stretch of the regular season, and he and his Georgia Tech team have been sitting in a hotel in Greensboro for about the past week. Mm -hmm. So getting treatment, looking much better here, moving. Early Alvarado in the game. rebounded the Walker miss. Long pass. It connected. And Baba Parham just off the bench buries a three. Another transfer. He came over from VMI where he was an offensive standout. Averaged 21 points per game as a sophomore, as a three-point shooter. Here he's primarily a defensive specialist for Coach Pastner. Olani no, and another rebound for Alvarado. And a three. I'm not sure what Miami was doing getting back defensively, but that's the one guy you cannot afford to leave wide open from beyond the arc. Michael DeVoe knocking down another three. He's played great in ACC competition, averaging over 16 points a game. He was eighth in the conference in the regular season in three-pointers made per game. 2.26. Wong fouled at the other end as Georgia Tech has taken a two-point lead. And we talk about the big three of Alvarado, Wright, and DeVoe. The best shooter would be Michael DeVoe, and he's not the guy you want to leave wide open with that much time in transition. Yeah, Jim Laranega said in the regular season meeting, he started in zone at the beginning of the game for the first time in more than a year, and DeVoe quickly got him out of that zone on his way to 29 points. So will we try the zone again today? So that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Well, you consider the fact that they have played two games in the last two days, and this is game three. He may have to go to some zone as well as try to find spots to get Willie Harrington on the court. As we see Harrington check in now to save guys of just a couple of minutes. But I can remember seeing the halftime score of that game earlier. 48 to 18. Yeah. Georgia Tech just blitzed Miami. It wasn't that close, according to Coach Larinaga. <laughs> As I said earlier, he just said they were awful. As they were adjusting to life without their starting point guard. Wong got hurt in the game, didn't play in the second half. But it was ugly 
regardless of the reasons. Strong drive. And Sturdivant couldn't finish. And then McGusty turned it over. Alvarado took it away. Sturdivant. Little stop and go move. Nicely done to score by Kyle Sturdivant. And a timeout called by Jim Laranega. With Georgia Tech up, they have seven field goals from six different players. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by New York Life, helping people act on their. The ACC's Defensive Player of the Year, Jose Alvarado, making his presence felt early. Getting back in transition, taking the basketball away, what he did to a tune of almost three a game this past season. The ACC steal leaders back-to-back -back years and leading to a basket. Start of it, the nice reverse layup as he's given Georgia Tech good minutes here early. Chris Paul, the last man to lead the ACC in steals in back-to-back -back years. And Alvarado idolizes Chris Paul. Yellow Jackets by three. And Kyle Sturdivant called for the foul. I mentioned he's a transfer from USC. Transferred back to Georgia. He's from Norcross after his dad passed away during the season last year. Gary who played in 21 games before his season ended with his dad's death. How about that block shot by Khalid Moore? And Parham coast to coast, fouled on the way up by Willie Harrington. Parham wants the bucket as well. He was a starter much of the year, is now a effective bench player. But by ACC standards, Georgia Tech is not a big team, but they do a great job protecting the rim with the shot blocking. Oftentimes, smaller teams take charges, but with Moses Wright, Khalid Moore, these guys get in there and contest every shot above the rim. Parr makes two free throws. He's 80 percent. He led the Southern Conference in scoring when he was at VMI 2018-19. 21 points per game. Made 3.6 three-point field goals per game. And Josh Pastor, when he was telling me about him, said, you know, he made more threes in two years at VMI than Steph Curry made in his two years, first two years at Davidson in the same conference back in those days. McGusty the bucket. Now, if you did that, would you wear it on your T-shirt? I would. Uh, I had more threes than Steph Curry. <laughs> exactly. <Yes. laughs> I just want to be a better putter than Steph Curry, who has a great affection for golf, and from what we understand, is an outstanding golfer. Alani I think one official under the bucket, I think, was going to call it a block. But the outside official, Roger Ayers, had a charge. Well, Roger Ayer is taking over that call. And you see Bubba Parham getting. Ooh. I think they should have let the official under the basket handle I that. Think, yeah, Clarence Armstrong, I believe, had that one correct. Overruled by Roger Ayers. And we could clearly see Clarence in the picture, and he wasn't giving the signal for offensive foul. Usually, as Jay Billis always points out, the officials give it a little extra when they're calling a charge. Well, Parham down the lane, not just a three-point shooter. And a five-point lead for the Jackets. Parham, seven points. That's right on his average per game. And he's done it in less than half of the first half. Augusti to Nasir Brooks. Nice move inside. He's transferred from Cincinnati with a win. For Miami today, this would be his 100th career win combined between the two schools. But Brooks has the size advantage over Moses Wright. Moses Wright was a power forward to start the season. The move to the five really helped Georgia Tech on both ends of the floor, but he's going to give up a couple inches to Nasir Brooks in this game. Jordan Usher, 47 points the last three games for Usher after he'd been in a little bit of a scoring drought. Parham again, and Brooks says that's enough of that. Long, giving a pass to the bucket, and that'll be a goaltending call. 
And nice move by Bubba Parham attacking the basket. However, he picked the wrong guy to attack. Nasir Brooks coming over, staying vertical and getting that left hand on the basketball. The body is legal if you stay vertical in that possession, leading to an opportunity for Isaiah Wong to get out in transition. It was not a goaltender. It was a foul called on Wright, who was a little slow to get up. He was tying his shoes. Maybe a little shaken up as well. It looks like he's trying to walk it off a little bit with a slight limp. So Wong will shoot two. One of the things you have to love about basketball during a pandemic and not many fans in the stands, you hear a lot of players commentary on the floor and you hear somebody miss a free throw, he with us. That means he's playing for the wrong team out there <laughs> going to the line missing free throws. So that's a little bit for your lingo next time you're out on the pickup court. I Somebody miss a shot, that. let him know he with us. Wong made one out of two. He's 81 and a half percent for the year from the line. Two point game. Georgia Tech on top. Alvarado nice speed to the wing. And the familiar whistle of Jim Larinaga. You can hear that as well. Even when there aren't folks in the stands, he wanted a particular play call, and boy, did that work. Brooks off the feed from McGusty. And Miami back even at 21. And you mentioned Jim Larnega making the change to send McGusty more so as the point guard, allowing him to make plays against the zone. And that has worked out very well for the Canes here thus far. And this isn't Jim Larinaga's first rodeo. We talked about yesterday. Yesterday's 200th win at Miami. Michael DeVoe, another three out of the corner. Junior from Orlando, Florida. Played at the powerhouse Montford Academy. Baseline drive, baseline drift. You see it so much in the game of basketball. When a player is attacking the basket, oftentimes it's not even to score, but to set up his teammate, who better be on that other side, standing in the corner waiting to knock down a three. Brooks, one on one on right, just trying to back him in. Nasir Brooks, seven feet, 240. Got his own miss. Count the bucket. And a chance for Brooks for a three point play at the line to tie the game. That's the one concern for Georgia Tech. When you play against a true big like Nasir Brooks, who does not want to go to, to his left, he misses the shot. And then the opportunity to get the offensive rebound, the put back, Michael DeVoe just adding. To the tab for Nasir Brooks. That contact means nothing. Usher step back three. Rebounded by Wong, a sophomore from Piscataway, New Jersey. Played his high school ball at Monsignor Bonner in Pennsylvania. One of the most improved players in the country this year. Made third team all ACC. Coach Larinaga said yesterday he thought he should have been a first team all conference player. And an offensive foul. Walker called for shoving Usher away. So it's been Nasir Brooks and Cameron McGusty with the bulk of the work. The seniors getting it done here for the Canes at the ACC turn. Our Kansas coach. Ball gets into the paint, kick out, Fire wide open corner. shot by Matthew Meyer. Great pass by Vital off that road. Thin line between a haircut and a mullet. He's flirting with it. Sean, Pac-12, what do you got? Will I don't Richardson think he's flirting with it. Let's just be real. Uh, what I got is Will Richardson. He's been great so far for Oregon. This has been a tight game. Arizona State trying to bring that momentum over from last night. S. Doc, C.A., back to you. All right, here's a look at the rest of the Pac-12 tournament bracket presented by New York Life. Tonight on ESPN 1130 Eastern, Colorado and California. We're in the championship game, 1030 Eastern time on ESPN Saturday night. I thought about something. We see the Pac-12 bracket and your S dot. Does that mean that Sean Farnham is Diddy? Well, they were talking about the difference between a haircut and a mullet. I, and he said, Sean, I thought he was talking about me. I, don't, I really am not the expert on that subject. I'd go for a mullet if I could do it. Don't, please don't. All right. <laughs> don't do that. 
As Anthony Walker called for the foul from Miami, his second. Mentioned yesterday, they're in the top three in the country and fewest fouls per game. They only foul just under 13 times per game. But every, and they have to do that so yeah. <laughs> scholarship guys can stay on the floor. But every time you see one of the Miami players pick up a ticky tack foul like the one we saw on Walker earlier in the half, just pushing off on the screen, then you think about does that come back to haunt you later? One out of two for Michael DeVoe. Under seven minutes to go in the half. Wong's pass got deflected by DeVoe, and he runs out and missed the layup. Alani Yi got it back. Elijah's a transfer from Stony Brook. He played three years there, was a first team All America East Conference player. Both of these teams have done well with transfers. Wong all the way down the lane scores with the left Isaiah Wong we've seen a lot of that here in the Greensboro Coliseum over the last two days Isaiah Wong attacking the paint and making opponents pay with his dribble penetration you know it's interesting to see her Brooks you see on the far side of the screen matched up with Moses Wright and we talked to Jim Larinaga earlier in the year about Nasir Brooks so we were excited to get him and still are but He's a better defender around the basket against traditional fives. So a lot of times in this league with so many stretch fives, he struggles to defend on the perimeter. But he's done a very nice job on right today and right on cue. He blocks the shot and then right fouls him. That's going to be the second foul on Moses Wright. So giving us here Brooks a lot of credit getting the job done defensively. Blocking the shot and then gathering the rebound. And great to see Miami third game in three days still playing with the same level of energy, especially when you consider the limited rotation that Jim Laranega has at his disposal. Moses Wright with two fouls. Still in the game for the time being. Oh, two fouls means nothing to Josh Pastner. <laughs> he gives his guys the opportunity to play through it. Oftentimes, you'll see him keep them on the floor the entire remainder of the half. We've seen him actually play guys with three fouls in the first half. Brooks back at the free throw line. Miami has a one-point lead. The last foul on Rodney Howard, his first. Well, here comes Bubba Parm. You know, we talk about sometimes not trusting coaches on things like pronunciation of names. Sometimes the facts, the stats aren't exactly accurate. That's Moses Wright scoring there. Remember earlier I said Josh Pastor told us that Parm had more threes in two years in the SoCon at VMI than Steph Curry had in his first two years at Davidson. Not only was that off, it was way off. <laughs> Brooks the miss. Nice rebound by Rodney Howard. And it was, I mean, Parham had 174 threes in two years for VMI. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. But Steph Curry had 284. Well, Sean, this is, you've been doing TV years, at David. least three times longer than I have, okay? Mm -hmm. But one thing I've learned in television is don't let the facts get in the way of a great story. But don't trust the coach. And, and, and Josh Pastor's awesome. Uh, th these are two very likable guys, and they're very generous with their time. But the one thing I've learned is sometimes you, you need to fact check. Well, when you said it, I said, really? Yeah. <laughs> and I, you know, Josh is a really smart guy. I mean, he, he graduated from Arizona in two and a half years. Played for Lute Olson, coached under Lute Olson. He got a master's, so okay, you know, that's that good. <laughs> Gotta have your facts all buttoned up to have that kind of academic resume. Alvarado the bucket. Josh Pastner is also great at promotion. No question about that. He's a but great I promoter. You know, that's the, I don't think you get, that's something you're going to lie about to pr <laughs> on purpose to promote your team. I just think someone probably told him that and he believed it. I'll say men lie, women lie, numbers Dang don't. Jack. 
fouled by Bubba Parm, who had more fouls in two years at VMI, I bet, than Steph Curry. <laughs> Beautiful find there to get Gak going to the basket. Willie Harrington now making great production in his third straight first half. Put him back on scholarship. He was a walk-on. <laughs> they gave him a scholarship last year. He's a walk-on again. I, I'm sure if they could put him on scholarship, they would. Gak completes the three-point play. And it's Miami by one. Of course, Jim Laranega, one of the all-time great March runs when he took George Mason to the final four. And Miami win for the third time in three days as a team that lost six straight and 10 out of 11 before they defeated Boston College in their regular season finale on Saturday. Sean, you and I both waited around for Miami to run out of gas yesterday, and they never did. <laughs> I'm not going to make the same mistake here and see if that's going to be the case. Oh, no. Well, you could hear Alvarado cry out in pain as he tried to stop the drive by Wong, and he is clutching his right knee and an obvious considerable pain. George Evans, number six. Josh Pastner out to check on him. You're hoping it was just maybe a knee to knee thing, but it looks more serious than that, obviously. Such a great competitor, such a tremendous defender. He told Coach Pastner, winning is more important to me than breathing. Let's hope it was just there, that knee-to-knee -knee contact. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by SoFi. Get your money right. To come back to the live action, Wong just missed the uh, free throw. On the front end of a one and one from Miami. Jose Alvarado helped to the locker room after sustaining what looked to be a knee injury after knee to knee collision with Wong. Usher, the floater wouldn't go. Wong rips down the rebound. Miami by one as we approach three minutes to go in the first half. The winner will play Virginia in the semifinals tomorrow. The Wahoos won a classic against Syracuse on a buzzer beater by Reese Beekman in today's first quarterfinal. DeVoe couldn't get around McGusty. Well defended. And Sean, at this mark, we take, we got to pay attention to Isaiah Wong. Four points at this point of the game. Only one field goal made. Jose Alvarado now out of the game. We'll see if he becomes more aggressive on the offensive end. Yeah, other signs of fatigue, too, for Wong. Two out of five from the free throw line for a guy who's 80% plus. So he might have shaky legs, which would be understandable as much as he's played. But Brooks has been a force inside, and he'll go to the line. Well, you made a great point, Corey, as we look at Alvarado still obviously in a lot of pain. And, you know, these kneecap to kneecap things can be really painful, as you know. But you made a great observation that he immediately screams in pain there. So it wasn't when his leg twisted awkwardly as he went to the court. So you hope it's not interior structural damage. It, you know, those kneecap things can be really painful. But let's hope that's all it is. Yeah, we, we hope that's the case for Jose Alvarado and Georgia Tech, who will be participating in the NCAA tournament for the first time under Josh Pastner, as well as those guys' career. So you okay. hope that's the case. It's something we'd love to see him return to this one, but bigger things ahead. Brooks. Dr. Moore was called for a second foul. Miami struggling from the free throw line. You know, Josh Pastner, they're definitely going to be in the NCAA tournament, although Joe Lenardi had him a little closer to uh, the bubble than I would have thought. This is year five for Josh Pastner. He said when he interviewed for the job at the Final Four in Houston in 2016, he told the Georgia Tech folks, I'll get you back to the NCAA tournament, but it's going to take five years. He said, not three or four, not six or seven. It'll take five years. So he nailed it right on the number. I said, well, what happens if you didn't do it in the fifth year? Would there have been a sixth year? He said, I don't know. 
But he had a five year plan. They haven't been to the tournament since 2010. And they've done a number of things that have never been done in Georgia Tech history. We mentioned earlier, 22 ACC wins in the last two years, the most ever consecutive years for the Yellow Jackets in conference play. And they've been in the conference now for 42 years. Hard to believe, you know, because Josh has been around so long, still just 43 years old. Highly regarded assistant in seven years at Memphis, where he went to four NCAA tournaments, and now in his fifth year here at Georgia Tech. Miami turns it over. He's looking for his first ACC tournament victory. 0-3 in this event is Coach Passner. The Audi halftime report coming up in moments. Recap of that epic ending and a terrific game throughout in Virginia and Syracuse. And Duke ending its season after a positive COVID test after their win against Louisville last night. That was the big news early this morning. Sturdivant to miss, and we're ticking down near a minute to go in the first half as Georgia Tech has missed its last five from the floor. And Josh Pastor looks out at his team and down two to end the half, but looks out and there's no Jose Alvarado, there's no Michael DeVoe, the best backcourt in the ACC this season. And neither of those guys on the court right now. Sturdivant called for the foul, his second. And it'll be the double bonus now. I mentioned earlier with Josh Pastor cares very little about two fouls, but without Alvarado being extra careful with Michael DeVoe, taking him out during these possessions to make sure he doesn't pick up that third going into the second half. Well, Nasir Brooks out playing his fellow five man, the player of the year, Wright by a long shot. 16 and five for Brooks. Wright has had four points and one rebound. Brooks said he came to Miami expecting to be the ACC defensive player of the year. Parham, a little turnaround, no, and Wong kept it alive. Miami can take the last shot of the half. And if they do, they're guaranteed of taking the lead into the locker room. Jim Laranega shouting out a play. On his coaching staff, he has an offensive coordinator, is Adam Fisher, and a defensive coordinator, Chris Caputo. And Bill Courtney handles all the scouting. That's how they divide up the responsibilities among the three assistants. Magusti, well short as the buzzer sounds. What a half for Nasir. Attitude. So many great games today, but the story is a game that won't be played. Duke's season is over due to a positive COVID-19 test. It was announced around 10.30 this morning. Their season is over. Kevin White, their AD, saying they will not compete and they will move forward on the 2021. They will conclude the 2020-2021 season. Uh, Florida State moves on to the semifinals because of that. We have a couple of schedule adjustments. The North Carolina-Virginia Tech game that was supposed to be the final game of the ACC tournament now is at 8.30 on ESPN. You see the rest of our schedule coming up here throughout a great night of college basketball. This has been the Audi Halftime Report. Tech offensively and defensively is why Josh Pastner's team has had such a successful year. Second half underway, it's Cam McCusty with a three. He was the co-star alongside Brooks in the first half. Here's Allison Williams. Well, Sean, I don't think you can overstate what Jose Alvarado means to this team just from an emotional standpoint. I mean, Moses told me that he's the heart and soul. He goes, we would not be anywhere near the position we're in without Jose Alvarado. And he told me that it's a mindset he's had since he was a youngster. He was always undersized, going up against bigger guys. He goes, but I just went out there. I tried to give it my all. I might not be the most skilled or the tallest, but I'm going to make you feel like I'm just as big as you. Augusti slipped. It leads to the score for Alvarado. A little hop, skip, and a jump after he scored, and clearly not running as smoothly as usual. But he's on the score sheet. They went the final 3.30 of the first half without him, without scoring. They have a couple of quick buckets, starting with the three by DeVoe. Long. We had just one made field goal in the first half. Has another to start this half. And everything that Allison said was echoed by Josh Pastner and by other people we talked to about Jose Alvarado. He was a three-star recruit. 
And Josh Pastor said, I just loved the intensity that he was a pest and how much he cared about winning. And his shot is blocked out of bounds by Brooks. Josh said when they offered a scholarship to Alvarado, other coaches called him and said, you're not in the AAC anymore, you're in the ACC. And he's not an ACC player. And he said, well, I disagree with that. And not only is he an ACC player, he's one of the best. I wonder if those coaches who called him still have jobs. <laughs> <laughs> right. Denied inside. Wong the other way, trying to get the call by yelling out as he laid it in. He doesn't say much, his expression doesn't change much, but he's much more involved here to start the second half, and Miami's opened up a seven-point lead. Largest of the game for the Canes. Right. The player of the year. Am I right in saying he had a headband on in the I first was, half? I was thinking the exact same thing. I was wondering if Allison could get us some intel on that. Moses Wright, who played with the headband in the first half, is taking it off here in the second half. Maybe wasn't playing well, ditches the headband, but off to a much better start here to start the second. Brooks short with that shot when he had 16 in the first half against Boston College Saturday's senior night. He finished the game at 21, which was a career high. Corner three, no. Wouldn't go for Khalid Moore. Walker, way too strong with the layup, but Alani ran it down for Miami. Wong is open, and he knew that was off. Wide right, he started to chase after it. You don't see that much. When we were kids, they always said, follow your shot, follow your shot. You don't see a lot of follow your shot these days. I agree, and I argued with it way back when is that Georgia Tech gets an easy one. And that's, I'm sure, concerning for Jim Laranega. You should have had your defense set. The basketball went out of bounds. No way that should happen as he goes to Dan Gak. Going to get him back in the game. Not liking what he's seeing from this group on the floor. Brooks. And a foul called. And that's on Moses Wright. And that's the third on the conference player of the year. It was third in the league in scoring at 18 a game, third in rebounding, eight per game, third in field goal percentage, just under 55%. Are there any other coaches who are still using that face shield? Josh Pastor admits to the fact that the CDC pretty much tells him that's doing him no good. <laughs> However, when you've had the type of season that they've had this year, he should be supposed to wear a mask with it. However, he, it's superstitious. Hey, su superstitious about headbands and face masks. Right. Try to dump it down low, and it was intercepted by Brooks. Miami by three. More than three and a half played second half. The number 13 seed trying to get to the semifinals with their third win in three days. They beat Pittsburgh and Clemson. Augusti lucky that got through to Brooks. Almost picked off by Usher. Brooks scores over Usher. You got to love the way that Nasir Brooks has approached not just this game, but the ACC tournament in general. He's been good for Miami the entire tournament, but this is a guy you can tell does not want to play his last game, and he continues to perform very well on both ends of the floor. Jack blocked the shot by DeVoe. Usher, the pull-up, smoothly done by Jordan Usher. Gives them 11 points per game and over four rebounds. Georgia Tech's been here in the triad for a while. They played Wake Forest Friday night, so they got here Thursday, and they stayed. The They've been here for a week. Russia couldn't finish on the dunk. Here's Khalid Moore. He scores over Deng Gak. They like the hotel they're in. They checked into a very nice resort nearby. And they wanted to stay. The top four seeds in the ACC tournament get to stay in that hotel. At the start of the weekend, they were number five. They needed Louisville to lose that regular season finale against Virginia, and then they'd flip-flop positions. So he said they were cheering like crazy, the players, for Virginia on Saturday, not because they really cared if Virginia or Louisville won. They just wanted to stay in the nice hotel. 
Out of bounds, 14.51 to go. They're enjoying the accommodations. Will they be sticking around for a while? Shielded was all bent as he put it back on. <laughs> They talked about smashing the COVID ball. They got off to a very rough start this year. They had a COVID situation around Labor Day. And uh, their protocols, wow, bad turnover by Wright. And then he fouls McGusty. And I believe that's going to be the fourth on Moses Wright. It is. And he pounds the floor because he knows he's going likely to the bench for quite a while. And Josh Pastor has no problem playing guys in foul trouble. However, with over 14 and a half minutes remaining in this game, no way you can leave Moses right on the floor. The turnover leading to the foul. And you have to understand your value. We talked about it with Cameron McGusty earlier. There, Moses Wright, you got to stay out of the way. Get, concede the two points if you have to to stay on the court. We're talking about COVID. Josh said after that. And here's Brooks trying to slam it. And he was denied. It looked like the ball might have slipped out of his hand. Usher charging the other way. But Josh said they had to quarantine for 14 days, everybody, in a hotel. So they went back. He said, well, we're not going to have any contact in practice. We're just going to do everything with guys six feet apart. And he said, and we started 0-2. You can't practice that way. They lost to Georgia State and Mercer. He said, OK, we're going back to practicing the real way. And uh, that's when the season took off with a win against Kentucky, which seemed like a bigger deal then. But uh, it was COVID, he feels, and the lack of practice time that had a lot to do with those season opening losses. McGusty lays it in. And that's a nice pass by Isaiah Wong getting out in transition, threading the needle. But Miami taking advantage of the turnovers from Georgia Tech to build a three-point lead. Alvarado. DeVoe, nice dump down. Rodney Howard lays it in. Nice recognition there by Howard, knowing the shot blocker was coming in Nasir Brooks just to dribble through and finish over the top. He's not going to beat Nasir Brooks vertically. He'll see some important minutes here now trying to guard Brooks. He's in for right. Leaning a lot on Brooks. I think Roger Ayers told him to back off a little bit. There's a three. And it's the walk on Willie Harrington who has another three. For the third straight game, Willie Harrington getting involved in the scoring column for Miami knocking down a three. One each of the last three games to give him five for the year. So something special is going on for Miami here in Greensboro this week. How about that move? Khalid Moore swooping to the bucket out of Briarwood, New York, Archbishop Malloy High School, which is also the alma mater of Jim Laranega. I mentioned that to Coach L this morning. He said, oh, yeah, we recruited Khalid. We had him down for a visit. He said, probably the nicest mother I've ever met on a recruiting trip. Usher the dunk. Oh, wow. I was ready to go into my Khalid Moore story, then Jordan Usher just took me way out yeah, of that. He took the air out of that. <laughs> Khalid Moore also wearing the number of another Archbishop Malloy alum who he shouldn't be able to wear that number because it should be retired, Kenny Anderson. A lot of great players out of Malloy. Of course, Jim Laranega was one of them. Kickball. In a media timeout, another good one. Virginia and Syracuse decided earlier today at the buzzer. This one might be as well. Our exclusive presentation of college basketball brought to you by SoFi. Get your money right. Oh, Kansas State is playing really, really well. Bradford is giving them great post presence scoring the basketball. The Bears were 20 point favorites. Sean, CA, back to you. K-State team, one of the youngest in the country for Coach Weber. They beat TCU just to get into that game with Baylor today. How about Oklahoma State? Another win against West Virginia. Mike Boyden has to be Big 12 Coach of the Year, right? Well, well you know what? Too many options out there. You got to thank Scott Drew as well. Georgia Tech shooting 67% in this half, and that'll go up. 
as Usher scores on a high percentage shot. He has 12 points for the game, 10 in this half. We talked about Jordan Usher doing the tough stuff for Georgia Tech, and he's had two tough slams over the last couple possessions. Brooks, they come to double him. And Howard and Moore. Tough pass. It just did get to Harrington. And he traveled just as he passed it off. Jordan Usher, the recipient of a beautiful find by Michael DeVoe, but Usher attacking the rim with reckless abandon, finishing regardless of the shot blocker and Brooks stepping in the way. We talked about the big three of Georgia Tech with well, the big three not having a strong performance thus far here in their first ACC tournament game. But Jordan Usher has brought his best here this afternoon. Yeah, they have just six from Alvarado, seven from Wright. But they have the lead and a chance to expand it. We go under 11 minutes to go. And DeVoe fouled by Deng Gak. Defensive breakdown allowing Michael DeVoe to get to that left hand. He is left hand dominant, very strong attacking the rim. Especially when he can get downhill so easy. First foul on Gak. DeVoe 76% from the line, missed the first. He had 20 points in their last game as they closed out the regular season with a win here down the street against Wake Forest. And moved into the four seed when Louisville lost to Virginia the next day. That was a big game because it gave Virginia the regular season title as well. After Florida State lost to Notre Dame earlier on Saturday. If FSU had defeated the Irish, they would have been the number one seed. In hindsight, Florida State probably thankful they got another day's rest. DeVoe. And you can hear Roger Harris asking for help. Tommy Morrissey. And it'll stick with Georgia Tech. See DeVoe getting out in transition. I like the no call on that possession. DeVoe lost the basketball. The ball was gone before the contact because there was plenty of contact. Went vertical. Vertical inside the restricted area. That's legal. Alvarado to miss. So Miami down three. We're midway through the second half. Yeah. The biggest news of this quarterfinal Thursday, the New York Life ACC tournament made this morning before action started off the floor. Duke announcing it was ending its season after a positive COVID test by one of their players after the win against Louisville last night. So Florida State will not face an opponent today. They advance to the semifinals, still haven't taken the court here. Florida State play the winner of the game coming up next. Should be the last game of the day. Matthew Hurt, Duke's star player, first team all conference, tweeted out that he was heartbroken, understandably so. He did work very hard, as they did collectively, particularly Hurt. Get bigger and stronger and make himself a much better player, most improved in the conference. Here, Miami had turned it over three times in the last four possessions. It's a 7 0 run for Josh Pastner's Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. But well, Alani is going to try to end that drought for Miami. And he does. Allison Williams. Well, Sean, I spoke with Florida State's Leonard Hamilton because it's just crazy to think this is the second year in a row that the day of the game in the ACC tournament, it gets canceled. Of course, they will be able to play tomorrow against the UNC Virginia Tech game. And he said, look, I, I didn't get philosophical with my team. I was just very matter of fact with them. He said, we've been dealing with this all year. It's part of being prepared this year is being ready to deal with the unexpected. He said, we're going to go to work. We're going to have a practice this afternoon, and then we're going to get ready to face our next opponent. He said, it's just been how the season's gone, and they've known from the beginning Beginning, whoever deals with adversity best will have the most success. It is strikingly familiar. Alvarado buries a three because it was on the quarterfinal Thursday. FSU is a regular season champ, had a double bye. They were going to play in the noon game against Clemson. And of course, the news had broken the night before about Rudy Gobert's positive test for the Utah Jazz. And I think everybody realized at that very moment the world had changed. 
the word had filtered out that morning, Corey, we were here, that even if the tournament decided to go on, Duke was not going to play. So they were kind of the school that set the ball in motion. Other conferences, I think, had already canceled their tournaments, which I think added to the ACC's motivation to stop. But a lot of similarities to last year. It, when you consider also Matthew Hurt, and you know, I'll talk about him simply because McDonald's All-American, one of the best players in the country coming out of high school, going to Duke, a, a program that's always contending for a national championship, in two straight years, no opportunity to play in the NCAA tournament. It and wasn't an NCAA tournament last year. Now, it was still going to take uh, considerably more work as Alvarado throws it away over the head of Howard. You know, Duke would have had a tough task tonight. True. Third game in as many days against a very fresh FSU team that's very deep. You know, they were the underdog tonight. True. But but those situations, that's something in their control. Right. They control that. COVID, they have no control over that situation. And a throw away by Alani Yee, Miami, perhaps running out of gas here, getting sloppy. But uh, perhaps this shouldn't have been unexpected. There has been a spike in COVID cases at Duke. The football team a couple of days ago went on pause. There was a notice sent by the administration to students yesterday saying that since uh, last Friday, as of 9 o'clock Tuesday night, there have been 102 undergrads on the Duke campus test positive, including 32 on Tuesday, which was the single highest daily count in the student body since the pandemic began. So it's a problem on the Duke campus, and the Duke team had been bussing back and forth to Durham and not staying here in Greensboro. Khalid Moore, the runner, and the putback is up and in. And Georgia Tech, with eight minutes to go, has opened up a little space here, a six-point lead. Quality minutes from Khalid Moore as well as Jordan Usher. These have been the guys that have done all the dirty work for Georgia Tech as the big three has struggled. It's been Khalid Moore, Jordan Usher, ushering in the 12-2 run. However, it's the regular Jose Alvarado stepping up, knocking down a big three for the rambling wreck of Georgia Tech. Back in Greensboro, we remind you to tune in for Selection Sunday, 7 Eastern time on ESPN and the app. Bracketology with Reese, Jay, LaFonso, Coach Greenberg, and Dick Vitale breaking down the bracket. Special guest that started with Sports Center at 515. Reese and the guys reveal the NCAA men's field of 68. We'll get together in Indianapolis in the NCAA tournament. Tech has its largest lead. Miami turnover prone here lately. Six turnovers on the eight possessions prior to that one. And they're on the ropes a bit. But seven and a half to go. And a lot of indicators that fatigue is a factor. Alvarado to the bucket. Toughest, and an eight-point edge for the Jackets. Toughest guy on the court, Jose Alvarado, the smallest guy on the court, but the biggest heart, attacking the basket regardless of the pain he's dealing with in his knee, not going to slow him down from an opportunity to get a win. And he took it away from Walker, but kicked it out of bounds as he tried to go forward. And Jose Alvarado just... Mano e mano going past Willie Harrington. Going high off the glass to avoid the shot blocker. And the finish to extend the lead to eight for Georgia Tech. Well, Coach Pastor talks about his motor, his leadership skills, his sacrifices. We heard his knee today. He had already been sufficiently banged up in the knee and hip. Wong fouled by DeVos, upset with himself. Isaiah will shoot three. To the point where Alvarado, a lot of times lately, uh, they don't want him to practice, and it's hard to get him to sit out practices because he just wants to practice. <laughs> well, you want to play, and, and that was the thing. You mentioned, you know, Georgia Tech sitting around in the hotel for the last week since their game on Friday against Wake Forest. And, you know, these guys, Jose Alvarado and Moses Wright, on Packer and Durham said, hey, we're bored. We want to play. Of course, you enjoy having the double by so that you can get guys healthy. But they got bored. They wanted to actually get out in the court and start playing some games. Wong makes the free throws. And they're not going to go home 
until their season ends. All of their classes are virtual at Georgia Tech. They don't want to go back to Atlanta, go back to campus, perhaps be in a, a less COVID safe environment. So Josh Pastor said the other day, we're hoping we go back to Atlanta on April 6th, the day after the national championship game. Usher called for the Georgia Tech foul. Five team fouls now on the Jackets. And here comes Moses right back in with four fouls. Quiet day for their star. Seven points and two rebounds for a guy who averages 18 and eight. But his team has a five point lead as we approach six minutes remaining. The winner will play Virginia tomorrow. Still Good position inside by Brooks. Boy, he took a lot of time to shoot it and left it short. There's yeah, still a lot of time left in this game. And of course, you don't want to let Moses Wright sit too long and get cold, but six minutes remaining. Josh Pastner taking the risk, getting right back in, and Miami doing the right, the right thing, going right at him on that possession. Brooks just unable to finish. Georgia Tech outscored Miami 18 to 12 without right in the game. DeVoe the bucket. And Miami without a field goal in more than seven minutes now. Nice cut. And then Walker missed a shorty. The previous possession, Brooks missed from in close. The officials conferring and indicating it'll be Miami ball with five and a half to go. Sean, what we've seen for the past two days, these are opportunities that Miami has finished off. And you talked about the fatigue earlier. Great job by the officials recognizing that's off of Moses' right foot as Miami retains possession. You can see how much havoc just Jose Alvarado puts on the basketball. No one has been able to affect Isaiah Wong like Alvarado has here today. Augusti the miss, right the rebound. Usher thought about the quick one. He attacks the bucket again. Didn't get the roll and his tap wouldn't go either. But Usher still had a terrific second half. Magusti spins to the bucket and they have a field goal. And they have a pulse. Within five now with 440 to go. First field goal in more than eight minutes. They went 804 between baskets. Right against Brooks. That's been a great battle all day. And Wright went for the offensive rebound and nearly committed his fifth. Yeah, Moses Wright has to be careful. That's a scenario he could have picked up his fifth foul and been disqualified from this game. And if I'm Miami, I continue to go at him in that post area. Only down five right now. You don't need threes. Continue to try to get the basketball to the rim. And Walker, the latest to miss another shot from in close for the Canes. DeVoe, nice dump down. Usher fouled. And he'll be at the free throw line when we come back. 3.54 to go. Georgia Tech leading Miami. 63-58 ACC Network Basketball. Brought to you by New York Life. Helping people act on their love for 175 years. He bucked into the game. He was one for six, but a three-pointer to break the tie. UVA defeats Syracuse in a hard-fought, well-played game on both sides to advance to tomorrow's semifinal against the winner of this game between Georgia Tech and Miami. Biggest shot of his career for the freshman from Baton Rouge. Tonight, Virginia Tech and North Carolina, and the only game that will be played tonight, Duke ending its season after a positive COVID test in their program following last night's victory over Louisville. Quite possible their season would have ended tonight against Florida State. Usher the free throw for Georgia Tech. Guy who does a little bit of everything for the Jackets. One out of two from the free throw line. Under four minutes to go. 
Miami well within striking distance, but do they have enough legs to be able to pull this off? Especially against a Georgia Tech defense that's tightened up the later this game has gone on. They're trying to run a design play a lob for Wong. And they were not able to execute it with the score. Alvarado, he took a hit and he'll shoot three. And Isaiah Wong committed the foul. And you can tell he's tired. Just three out of eight shooting, a season high. Four turnovers. Five out of eight from the free throw line, well below his usual percentage. Understandably so. Third game in three days, and he played just about every minute of the first two games against Pittsburgh and Clemson. And he's had to carry the load all year long for Miami. You have to remember, Cam Augusti missed games. They've had so many players missing games, and you look at his minutes, 113 out of the total possible 117 minutes during this ACC tournament. Three games in three days, he can start to wear on the legs. Obviously, it uh, should be a big advantage to have the double bye, and particularly rough. You know, if you're one of the bottom six teams, you have to win five games in five days to win this. That's what Duke was hoping to do when they arrived to get back to the NCAA tournament. They won't play in it for the first time since 1995. Approaching three minutes to go. Augusti for three and he gets fouled. Shooting a three. That's the third time we've seen that happen in the second half. It was Khalid Moore committing his third. Khalid Moore's reaction midway. As soon as he jumped, recognizing he had made a mistake, he was going to hit Cameron Augusti, disappointed in himself for committing that foul. Mention Morris from Archbishop Malloy in Queens, their alma mater, Jim Laranego. And I spoke with Jim this morning. I asked him who were the foremost influences on him, because he mentioned he played for Joe Mullaney and Dave Gavitt at Providence. Uh, two legends in their own right. He said, but really the man who made me want to coach was Jack Curran, his coach at Malloy. He's also an outstanding baseball coach. He said, I lived in the Bronx. The school was in Queens, and a lot of nights Coach Malloy would, uh, Coach Curran would give me a ride home from Malloy and just talk about life and stories. And so just looking at him and idolizing him, I decided I want to be a coach. And he's become a great coach. We get a great role model to follow. Very few have done as well as Jack Curran has. He won five city championships coaching basketball and 17 in baseball. Coach Curran is in uh, both the New York uh, Hall of Fame for coaching in baseball and basketball. Jim Laranega told me this morning that he passed away in 2013 watching Russ Smith star for Louisville in the Big East tournament while Miami was winning the ACC tournament under Coach Laranega. That's an offensive foul on Moses Wright to take him out of the game with two and a half to go and his team leading by six. And about this point, when he catches the basketball charging to the rim, you hear the Miami defense saying, that's five. And no question about the call. I mean, Ding Jack had great position and was about as stationary as one could be. Well, they actually expanded the margin when Wright went out of the game with four fouls. Let's see how this goes. Rodney Howard now part of the double team on Brooks. Can somebody make a shot for tiring Miami? Olani didn't get it up on the rim. And then Gak was on the end line. Sean, we came on air with me saying, although Moses Wright was the ACC player of the year, Jose Alvarado was the guy that was the most valuable player for this Georgia Tech team. We'll see if that's actually the case. Going down the stretch right here is we saw what happened at the end of the first half with Alvarado off the floor, the way Georgia Tech struggled. Two minutes to go. Miami took it back. And it's a travel on Cam Mcgusty. A timeout called by Josh Pastner. We'll take a 30-second break. Be right back to Greensboro after this. Williams 
Back in the Greensboro Coliseum. 156 to go. Georgia Tech by six over Miami. Georgia Tech trying to hold on. Moses right out of the game, and now Jim Laranega with his team fatigue, trying to put some full court pressure on. But when you have ball handlers like Michael DeVoe, that can be difficult. Timeout Tech with DeVoe in a bit of difficulty near midcourt. Jose Alvarado coming back in the second half, making a difference for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. You see the injury that knocked them out. The scream, of course, concern for Alvarado having to be carried off the court, but coming back in like Willis Reed, getting the wide open layup and then knocking down a huge three, not a huge scoring night for Alvarado. However, he's made timely buckets when his team has needed him most and still fearless attacking the basket. Fearless is one of the many words the coaches and his teammates use to describe him. The word Jim Laranega used was annoying. <laughs> In a good way. You know, the coaches talk about if he's on your team, you love him. If he's the other team, you can't stand him. But he's just a pest with the way he defends. And not dirty, just pesky as he could possibly be. Extreme confidence. That's probably the reason why I love him so much. Jose Alvarado, regardless of size, stature, feels as though he's the biggest guy on the court and he's the best guy on the court at all times. But I love the fact that he takes defense personally, always accepting the biggest challenge of the opposing team. That's a travel. DeVoe concerned about the approaching double team from some long defenders in Gack and Walker. Miami over the last 11 minutes. One for eight from the floor with eight turnovers. They've made seven free throws to hang around, but if you're looking for evidence of fatigue being a factor. That's not typically the way they play. Augusti, good legs in that shot and a three to cut the deficit in half. And so he would be able to be trapped. I'd still get it to him. He's an 88% free throw shooter. Now the problem for Miami, if you want to force free throws, they've only committed four fouls, so they have fouls to give. But what Miami wants to do right now is trap. And with Alvarado's quickness not being there, it's difficult for him to get out of that trap, and a smaller player would struggle trying to get the basketball out amongst that size. Well, DeVoe handled the ball the last time. He threw a very sloppy pass off the sideline. Alvarado is fouled and gets up gingerly with some help. They have Bubba Parham in the game, another guard to help handle the ball and an 80 percent free throw shooter if it gets to that point you see Alvarado who just got healthy now dealing with the left ankle as well as the right knee Augusti called for his third foul still one foul to give for Miami as we approach a minute to go in this ACC tournament quarterfinal Kyle Sturdivant who hasn't played much in the second half again smaller unit Free throw shooters on the floor. Alvarado. Now you see what I mean? <laughs> you can't catch him. <laughs> it's hard to trap a guy like that. Jim Laranega called it, that move by Alvarado his Steve Nash when he kind of circle dribbles and then either lays it in or backs back out. What a move to the bucket by Bubba Parham, but he's slow to get up and limping a bit. And for the moment, it's five on four. Long joined the fray, but he was slow to get down the court. And it's McCusty burying another three. Wong is completely out of gas. And that was a pivotal possession on offense, and he barely made it into the front court. But it's McCusty keeping Miami's hopes alive right now. And Bubba, He's up to 25 points for the game. Bubba Parham making a great move, great finish, but on the other end of the floor, Cameron McGusty, he still has some gas in the tank. The senior does not want his college career to end, and he raises up and knocks down a three to make it a two-point game. Literally single-handedly keeping them in this, he has scored McGusty the last 10 points for Miami. So Miami without any timeouts. Augusti, two years at 
Miami after two at Oklahoma with a redshirt year in between. He sat out a year as a transfer. Had a very nice year. In the absence of so many other stars, so many man games lost due to injury, and Chris, including Chris Likes, was an all conference guard. Who played in just a couple of games early in the year and then lost the rest of the year to an ankle injury. By the way, McGusty's career high is 28 in December of 19 against Coppin State. It was high in an ACC games 27 against Boston College. Just this past weekend on senior night, Miami win that ended a six game losing streak. Miami with a foul to give here. You want to go after the trap, see if you can get a steal, but you can be very aggressive just in case you can't get the basketball. You still no free throw, so you want to make sure you put yourself in the bonus. DeVoe with Gak, and now they go to trap in the corner, and Sturdivant uses Georgia Tech's last time out. Jim Laranega put Dang Gak on the ball, and part of that double team trap in the corner, 6'11, 220 with very long arms. Georgia Tech helping Miami, however, the one place, well, I shouldn't say one because there are four of them in the backcourt. They're called dead man corners. You do not want to go to the corner and you see Sturdivant run directly to the corner. Now you have four defenders. When you include the sideline and the baseline, that is the place you do not want to catch the basketball against a trapping team. So no timeouts left. Miami still with the foul to give. Possession arrow for Georgia Tech. And the shot clock is on with 28.8 on the game clock and 28 on the shot clock. So essentially that's not a factor. But even if you get the basketball inbounds, if you're Miami, you aggressively trap. You're not scared of a foul being called because you have a foul to give. You would not be putting Georgia Tech on the line, but either try to tie the basketball up as the possession arrow goes to Georgia Tech still, but you tie the basketball up or you take that foul, putting the game in the bonus. And now they're going to inbound from a tough spot. Usher on the sideline near the corner with Gak trying to cause him difficulty. And the Miami bench right there as well. DeVoe runs to the ball. They're going to try to trap him. DeVoe to Sturdivant, and he's fouled. You don't mind that foul. Still not shooting. So now when you need to foul, you can put Georgia Tech on the line one and one. This is the time you do not want Jose Alvarado to catch the basketball. Usher to throw it in again with Gak. Look at that leap by Gak, and it's a bad pass. Alvarado barely saved it. What a play. And he has it back. And he has Usher all alone. Alvarado with the save of the ball and perhaps the game. And then Miami turns it over on the inbound. I've got a lot of favorites in this league, but this guy is at the top of the list. Jose Alvarado not giving up on the possession, and then the presence of mind, throw it ahead, allow Jordan Usher to do it, make it a two-possession game, and you see the excitement of Jose Alvarado. And they nearly turn it over on the inbounding play, and Wong commits the foul. Jose Alvarado, you weren't watching in the first half, had a hard knee-to-knee -knee collision with Isaiah Wong, down in pain, helped to the locker room in obvious considerable pain, and then with the game and the stay in the ACC tournament, perhaps hanging in the balance, jets to save the ball just as it was about to cross the sideline. Well, he missed the free throw. Still a four-point lead. Wong, another air ball. And out of bounds to Georgia Tech with seven and a half to go. They don't have a timeout. 
Alvarado hoping they take it away from him. And it's a three that won't go for McCusty, and that's it. So, a harrowing ending for the fourth seeded Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, but they survive in advance. And the huge play at the very end by Alvarado might have been the game saver. Jose Alvarado walking off the floor. He needs to come back. We need to talk to him because he's the guy that saved the game for Georgia Tech, hustling after the basketball. And not only to hustle to save it and get it in,